Whether you've bent down the wrong way, lifted something very heavy off the floor, or you've just been struggling with nagging lower back pain for a while now, there are things you can do to speed up your recovery and quickly relieve your pain. But if you don't do anything about it and you just hope for it to heal on its own, there's a good chance that you'll just re-injure it again because you're not solving the cause of the problem. And that's a major issue because when you constantly have pain in your lower back, you can't work properly, you can't sleep properly, and you definitely can't work out properly. So today I wanna go over the five key steps you can take to quickly recover from lower back pain and prevent it from happening again in the future. When you first start feeling that pain and you start thinking that you've injured your back, your first step towards recovery is to set up an ideal environment for your body to repair itself. All too often we'll be working out, doing yard work, or just lifting something off the ground, and we'll start to feel that tightness in our lower back, but instead of listening to our body, we just try to push through it. This is obviously a bad idea because we all know that doing one more set of squats or shoveling more snow simply isn't worth it since it'll just make your injury worse and it'll take you even longer to recover. The other common mistake is stretching immediately after an injury. Now, stretching has its place in the recovery process, but it shouldn't be done right after getting an injury. This is because there's a high chance that your back pain stems from a muscular strain, which is caused by overstretching or hyperextending your back muscles. So if you're feeling pain that came from overstretching your muscles, the last thing you'll wanna do is stretch them even further. Instead, you'll wanna stop the activity that's causing the pain and start applying ice to the injured area every two hours for 20 minutes at a time to help reduce inflammation. You'll also wanna get somewhere where you could rest, but when lying down and resting, it's crucial that you're doing it on a firm surface. One of the worst things you could do for your back, especially after getting an injury, is to sink into a super soft bed. This is because a soft mattress doesn't provide much support, so your upper back and your hips will sink down into the mattress, which will cause your spine to curve and hyperextend, leading to more pain and making it harder to heal. So make sure you lay down on a firm or at least a medium firm surface, and you may even wanna try resting on the floor. When you lay your back down on the floor or a similar hard surface, your body can't sink down and and your spine is put into a neutral position, which is ideal for recovery. While resting, icing, and taking it easy for a couple days, you'll also wanna begin with step two, which is eating an anti-inflammatory diet. And guys, this is super powerful and crucial for recovery if you're constantly having nagging lower back pain, and especially if you've recently had an injury. Most people only focus on what exercises and stretches they should do, which I'll get to in a second, but to speed up recovery, your diet should consist of only whole unprocessed foods, and you should eliminate and avoid things like refined carbohydrates, fried foods, soda, high fructose corn syrup, alcohol, and processed meat. All these foods will contribute to more inflammation, and the problem is the longer that it takes to reduce the inflammation, the longer it'll take you to heal. Natural foods have the exact opposite effect, and some may even help lower inflammation. For example, fruits like kiwi and especially pineapple contain bromelain, which is a protein digesting enzyme known for its anti-inflammatory effects. Foods high in omega-3 like salmon, walnuts, flax seeds, and chia seeds are all excellent to eat as well because omega-3 has been shown to help prevent and reduce excessive inflammation. You'll also obviously wanna eat a lot of greens as well as good natural sources sources of protein and fat. To put it simply, don't go crazy over complicating your diet. Just eliminate all processed foods and only eat whole natural foods to lower inflammation and speed up recovery. Now the next step is to start foam rolling and stretching. Keep in mind you should let at least 48 to 72 hours pass after your injury before you begin this step. When foam rolling, many people make the mistake of foam rolling their lower backs directly. This is a mistake because when foam rolling the lower back, you can easily allow your upper body and hips to sink down, which will once again cause hyperextension of the spine. On top of all that, the lower back muscles are rarely the cause of the lower back pain. Instead, for many people, the problem stems from their hip flexors, glutes, and hamstrings. So to begin foam rolling, we can start with the glutes by first sitting down on the foam roller and then crossing one ankle over your other knee and tilting your body towards the same side that your bent knee is pointing towards. The more you tilt to the side, the more you'll target the gluteus medius, and the less you tilt, the more you'll target your gluteus maximus. You wanna spend some time rolling out both, and whenever you find tender spots on any foam rolling movement, you'll wanna slow down and work on those spots for 20 seconds before continuing. 
Now for your hamstrings, you'll start sitting on the foam roller with your hands now behind your back and you'll want to pull and push your hips back and forth to roll those hamstrings out. If you can handle the movement with both legs on the foam roller, then you can try to bend one knee and focus on only rolling out one leg at a time to put more pressure on that hamstring. Finally, to roll out the hip flexors, you'll wanna lay down in a prone position, open up one hip, bend that knee, and lay your opposite upper thigh on the edge of the foam roller. Then with short back and forth motions, roll out the hip flexor, once again, making sure to stop and focus in on tender areas for 20 seconds at a time. Keep in mind, if any of these cause anything more than very minor discomfort for your lower back, then don't do it yet. But in total, you'll want to spend about 10 to 15 minutes every other day going through these foam rolling movements. Now, after you foam roll, you'll want to move on to your stretches and stretching can help big time. There are so many people with tight hamstrings that repeatedly injure their lower backs, not realizing that their hamstrings are the cause of the problem. When your hamstrings are too tight, they pull on the pelvis, which pulls on your spine. If you sit a lot at work and throughout the day in general, your hamstrings and your hip flexors will both get tighter. And tight hip flexors will also cause lower back pain. We do want to take the stretching slow at first. So for the first stretch, you'll wanna start by lying on your back, pulling one knee into your chest and holding that position. If that doesn't cause pain, you could try pulling both knees into your chest and holding that position. Next, you'll wanna perform a piriformis stretch by crossing one ankle over your knee, then laying back and pulling the leg that's under your ankle towards your face. Another stretch you'll wanna do is the cat-cow stretch. Here you'll start on all fours with a flat back, then inhale as you tilt your pelvis back for the cow stretch, and then exhale and tuck your tailbone towards your chest for the cat stretch, then go back and forth. Finally, you'll wanna stretch your hamstrings, and one of the best stretches you can do is the simple sit and reach, where you would sit on the ground, put both feet out straight in front of you, and just reach for your toes with your knees locked out. If that's too tough right now, you can grab a towel, put it around your foot, lay back, and slowly pull your foot upwards with your knee locked out. You can do all of these stretches daily, and you'll wanna hold each stretch for 20 seconds, then release, and then repeat for three to six rounds. Let's move on to step four, which is to strengthen the surrounding muscles. Once you're ready to start slowly working out again, you'll wanna move on to this step. Just make sure that you save stretching for after your workouts, or stretch on separate days. Don't do it before your workouts. But to prevent another lower back problem in the future, we'll wanna strengthen the glutes, the back muscles, and especially your core. Your core is so important because when your core is strong, it'll support your spine, especially if you're lifting something off the ground. On the other hand, if your core is weak, all that weight will be transferred over to your spine, increasing the chance of re-injury. First, you can start slowly working on the core with an exercise known as the tabletop leg press. This would be set up by laying on your back, bending your knees at 90 degrees, and then placing your hands on your knees. Then your goal is to simply crunch up a tiny bit and push your quads into your hands while simultaneously pressing them away. Hold this position for a few seconds and repeat for reps. Next, you could do a bird dog by getting on all fours and then extending one arm and the opposite leg straight out, then returning. Repeat this for 30 seconds before switching to the other side. You can also perform some glute bridges by laying on your back, squeezing your glutes and abs, and pushing through your heels to lift your hips up until you create a straight line from your shoulders to your knees. Then lower back down and repeat for reps. Once you get to the point where these exercises start becoming easier and pain-free, you can then start slowly easing back to more conventional exercises like lunges, squats, and more regular core work. Specifically for the core, I'll link up a video below in the description that'll show you 10 exercises that you could do at home to really improve the strength of your core so you can prevent this from happening again in the future. Just make sure that you've completed the other steps and you're ready for them before beginning. Now, the last step is to change your daily habits and maybe even your lifestyle to prevent this from happening again in the future. First of all, if you're overweight or if your muscles are deconditioned, understand that until you change that, you're gonna continue risking future lower back injuries. As I mentioned, if your core is weak, it won't support your back. And if you're overweight, your spine has to support all that extra weight all the time. So make sure you're eating right, and once you're fully healed, make sure you start working out consistently. Another daily habit you wanna do your best to avoid is prolonged sitting. And if you do have to stay seated for a long time, let's say because of your job, do your best to maintain good posture while sitting 
and throughout the day in general. Taking simple steps like raising your monitor higher to eye level or simply sliding your chair in closer can help improve your daily posture. Another thing is if you injured your back lifting something off the ground, you should definitely learn how to properly lift things off the ground. When lifting anything, you don't want to bend straight down at your waist. Instead, you'll want to first pull your shoulder blades back, stick your chest out, and focus on maintaining the natural curve in your spine as you bend your legs and squat down to grab whatever it is that you're lifting. Then continue pushing your chest out and keep your back flat as you lift up. Next up is sleep, which is another important factor. Every day you're gonna be creating microscopic tears in your back muscles just by supporting your trunk when you stand, walk, and even sit. So getting enough quality sleep on a good mattress every night is vital for spinal health. We already touched on the importance of having a firmer mattress. That doesn't only apply while you're injured. You should continue sleeping on a mattress that's at least medium firm to prevent future lower back pain and to optimize alignment and recovery while you sleep. You should do your best to also sleep mostly on your back and your side instead of your stomach since sleeping on your stomach offers no support for your lower back. Last but not least, if you smoke cigarettes, protecting your lower back is another great reason you now have to quit because nicotine restricts blood flow to the discs in the spine. Smoking will also decrease the amount of oxygen in your blood, which will decrease the amount of nutrients that can get to the muscles and the tendons in your lower back. So that's about it guys. I really hope this video has helped you out and hopefully you'll experience less back problems in the future. If you'd like to thank me for the work that went into this video, nothing helps me more than you subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell icon. Also, like I already said, if you're overweight, you definitely wanna lose the weight right away to make things easier on your back. We're currently running a challenge that's helping my clients lose 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only 42 days. And I think it could really help you if you're trying to lose some weight. It comes with a customizable meal plan, a recipe book, a 42 day workout plan that can be adjusted if you have any issues. And best of all, it comes with an accountability coach that'll be there to answer any questions and guide you the whole way. To find out more, you can click the link below or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.